In this week's Just the Tip Tuesday, we're gonna discuss four things that every seller should know before they sign a sales contract. I'm Chris Nelson with Genstone Realty, but before we get started, a little bit of house cleaning. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, consider subscribing. This channel is all about real estate advice, tips, and tech. So if any of those excite you, you're in the right place. And if you find any value in this video, do me a favor, drop me a like and or a comment, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you're notified of my future post. Right now, the real estate market is crazy. After 17 years in this industry, I can't say that I've seen a real estate market quite like the one we're experiencing right now in 2020. Homes are selling fast and they're selling for a lot of money and I'm seeing a lot of sellers get the short end of the stick because they're not doing a few simple things to make sure that their transaction proves successful. Number one, now this actually surprises me because at this point I would think that every realtor knows that they need to be doing this, but you need to have your realtor call the loan officer for any offer that you are about to accept to talk about the buyer. Now, the lender can't go and release private information like credit scores and things to that extent, but a well-seasoned realtor will know exactly what questions to ask that loan officer to make sure that the loan officer has actually done their job and verified certain things like the buyer's income and the fact that they are employed. There are other important questions to ask, and if you aren't aware of what those questions are, feel free to reach out to me or another experienced realtor who will help guide you along the process. You also wanna make sure that you're getting a BFI, a buyer's financial information form. When a buyer is purchasing a home, a pre-approval only says that a lender or a financial institution is willing to lend the buyer money to purchase the property. However, the buyer is still responsible for closing costs and other expenses along the way, like a home inspection, an appraisal, and several other things that they may have to pay out of pocket up front. A buyer's financial information form in PA is a two-page document that asks the buyer several questions, such as, do you have financial liquidity? And if so, how much financial liquidity do you currently have? What are your liabilities? Do you currently have a car payment, a credit card payment, student loans, or any other thing that you are responsible to pay on a monthly basis? It will also ask questions like, will you occupy the home? Do you owe child support? Have you ever filed for bankruptcy? And the list goes on. But these are very important questions because you will be surprised how often a seller is unaware that the buyer doesn't have the financial means to purchase the property. Or maybe they're just ignorant to the fact that they need more than just the down payment. So it's extremely important to get a BFI upfront and compare that to the pre-approval to make sure that your buyer is a solid buyer. Number three. Number three is really all about appraisal contingencies. Right now I'm seeing a lot of homes sell for over asking. Now if a buyer has an FHA, a VA, or a USDA loan, the buyer is generally protected with the language that's in the state contract that says that if the home does not appraise, the lending institution will not issue the loan, theoretically making everyone go back to the drawing board and renegotiate terms or the deal falls apart. But with conventional financing, it's actually different. As a matter of fact, if a buyer offers over asking, let's just say the house is listed for 200,000 and the buyer decides that they wanna offer $210,000, if that home does not appraise, the buyer is on the hook for the difference. Now, as I mentioned, a BFI is extremely important because you're gonna know right up front for a buyer who's going over asking, do they have the financial means to bridge that gap? Now, if there's an appraisal contingency addendum in there, understand that in the event the home does not appraise, one of three things are gonna happen. Either the buyer is going to make up the difference, the seller is going to take the loss, or both parties will figure out some type of negotiation where they meet in the middle. I've seen it go all different ways, but know the difference in your offer and whether or not an appraisal contingency could throw everything off. All right, number four, and this is probably my favorite because I think that it's something that most people don't consider. In Pennsylvania, the way the state contract is written is it says that the buyer has five days to supply the seller with their earnest money deposit. Now that can be altered to reflect a shorter duration. And this is the point that I'm trying to make. I would encourage any seller to reduce that from five days to one day or request that the buyer actually have their earnest money deposit submitted with 
the actual contract. Because what happens is after you sign the contract, both buyer and seller have signed the contract, you have this legal document that says that the buyer will buy the home and here are all of the dates and times that the buyer will follow. Well, if the buyer has five days to submit the deposit, the buyer has no skin in the game. Theoretically, they could just not make the deposit. It gives them, theoretically, five days to really consider whether or not they wanna make good on the offer that they've presented. So my fourth tip and probably one of my favorite tips is to shorten that duration to one day, two days, or better yet, have the deposit check submitted with the contract. So there you have it. I'm Chris Nelson with Genstone Realty. Thank you for tuning in for yet another episode of Just the Tip Tuesday. Again, do me a favor, if you found any value to this video, comment, like, share. And with that being said, tune in next week for the very next Just the Tip Tuesday with Chris. Until then, take care.